There's a link between cell phones and cancer. Jeffrey Brown has the story. The news led to provocative headlines, all triggered by an announcement from a panel of the World Health Organization. A team of 31 scientists from 14 countries said radiation emitted by cell phones is, quote, possibly carcinogenic and may be associated with some risk for brain cancer. But the group also said that evidence of a direct link is still far from clear, and it called for more study. A cell phone industry group put out a statement that today's news does not mean cell phones cause cancer. So to walk through what is and is not known, we're joined by Dr. Keith Black, Chair of Neurosurgery and Neuro Neuroscience at Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Dr. Black, uh, welcome to you. So what does possibly carcinogenic mean exactly? What, what it means is that, you know, the World Health Organization panel of scientists looked at the current available evidence that's been published as well as some unpublished data that should be coming out shortly from the Interpol, which is a multinational study and concluded that uh, the evidence suggests that there is a possible link between cell phone use and brain cancer. Um, this is uh, looking at multiple studies, but uh, the best conclusion at this point would suggest that there is the possibility for a link. Now, the, the issue is the radiation, right? Explain what researchers are concerned about and, and what they're studying. So essentially a cell phone is a microwave antenna which generates microwave radiation. Uh, and we know that that microwave radiation can penetrate into the brain when you hold the cell phone next to your ear. In fact, it's related to the square of the distance. So the closer you get a much, much uh, greater amount of radiation going into the brain. And that radiation en energy, uh, when it hits biological tissues, there is some concern that it may actually uh, cause cells over a long-term uh, time period to transform from normal cells into cancer cells. Well, to be clear now, uh, uh, th this is a shift for the WHO, but as I said in the introduction, at the same time, researchers said that they have, they have not found a direct link so far. So tell us, what, what is it that we don't know and what makes this hard to, to make a direct link? So what we don't know currently is whether cell phone use is safe, and we don't know that it's unsafe. The problem that we have is that about half of the studies have shown that there's no correlation to brain cancer and cell phone use, and half of the studies that have been done have shown a correlation. Uh, the problem that we have is that the studies that tend to show no correlation tend to be studies that look at people that have had very short time periods of cell phone use and very low amounts of minutes of using a cell phone. The studies that do show a correlation have tend to be studies that have looked at people that have used cell phones for a period of 10 years, for example, and are using cell phones, say, for 30 minutes a day, higher term use. So the longer term studies, the studies that have been somewhat better designed, although still flawed, have tended to show this correlation. The problem we have is that we know that most environmental agents that cause cancer don't cause cancer after a month or a year or two years of exposure. The best example I can give to illustrate this is that if one was to start smoking cigarettes when they were 12, we don't expect them to develop lung cancer when they're 22. We expect them to develop lung cancer when they're 42 or 52, three or four decades of exposure. We just don't have that long period of study with people that have used cell phones. Well, so of course people wonder what they should do, and I, the, this group did not propose guidelines or regulations. As to advice to consumers, I noted that one of the researchers said, pending the availability of additional research, it is important to take pragmatic measures to reduce exposure such as hands-free devices or texting. So fill in that picture for us. What advice would you give people given what we know and what we don't know? So, you know, the, the, the best thing is to be informed. I think the, the best thing for consumers and the best thing about the WHO statement is that 
at least consumers can be aware that there is a potential risk and there can therefore they can begin to sort of take measures to use the cell phone more safely even if you read the insert in the cell phone it'll tell you to hold the cell phone you know an inch or so away from your ear so that the radiation doesn't go directly into the brain uh, best to use an earpiece best to use it on speaker mode best to use text if you're driving best to use hands-free uh, and not to put the cell phone you know right adjacent to your brain uh, the other thing to be aware of is that we haven't had any good studies in the pediatric population a child's skull is much thinner uh, the scab is much thinner and the amount of radiation that goes into the pediatric brain is much higher than in the adult so we should be cautious with how we allow our children to use a cell phone they're going to be the ones not only using it at a much younger age but using it over a much longer duration and just and just uh, brief so oh, i'm sorry no just briefly i can't resist asking you uh, dr black what about you yourself you, you use cell phone or does this change how you see it no i i i i, I use a cell phone but I always use it either on speaker mode or use it with an earpiece or text. I, I don't put it next to, to my brain. All right, Dr. Keith Black, thanks so much. Thank you very much for joining us.